want to do this morning, you are going to bring your vessel. Amen. At the end of the word of God, bring your vessel, not a few. Amen. That's what we want to do. And we want to sing that hymn 488 um, from the same hymn book. We'll stand to sing verse 3. After that, we'll be led in prayer. Hymn 488, bring your vessels, not a few. 488. <laughs> and most heavenly father we bless your name Amen. glorious is your holy name Amen. for there is none like you none can be compared to you lord accept our thanks Amen. thank you O lord god almighty for your self-keeping you've kept us O lord in the midst of O lord and vastities O lord we have seen your help lord glory be unto your name Amen. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the promises of your word. Amen. Thank you, O oh God, for that promises have enabled us to be gathered here today. Amen. We are in the land of the living, not because of our powers, not because of our righteousness, but entirely because of your love. Amen. Father, accept our thanks. Amen. We have come just as we are. Lord, we have come with our earthly vessels. We have come with our lives in mess. But we trust, Lord God, that you can rectify us. Amen. Father, it is in this faith we pray to you today, O oh God, that you fill our vessels. Amen. We commit, O oh Lord God Almighty, your servant, whom you've chosen, O oh Lord, that you will immerse him with your word, Amen. that as he speaks the word of life, Amen. Lord, the word will come with power. Amen. That word, oh Lord, that will break the heart of sin. That word, oh Lord God, that will inspire us. And oh Lord, that word that will make us when we pray. Lord, we will pray through to salvation. We'll pray through to sanctification. We pray through the mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit. Lord, come and do it today. Lord, we know that in your presence, there is fullness of joy. So if there anyone here that is sick, oh Lord, we come with expectation 
to your healing power. Lord, let it be reached, oh God. Even to those, oh God, that might be listening through the internet, oh God. Lord, Father, we pray that you reach them, oh God. Lord, we want to say that today we want to live with joy. That our joy will be full, oh Lord. Lord, come and do it, oh Lord. Father, we know that people are gathered all over the world also in your name. Father, as you're blessing us, we pray that you bless them. Lord, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You are all welcome to the house of God. And we want to also specially welcome those that may be worshiping with us today for the first time. Um, we love you, and God loves you too. And we're happy that you are here. It's a prayer that God will bless you before you go.
scripture reading for this service will be taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 3. Revelation chapter 3, verse 1. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, This thing say, saith he that at as the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name that thou livest and art dead. Two, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy work perfect before God. Three, remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Oh, no. 
Please turn our Bibles to uh, books of Kings, Second Kings, chapter two. Second Kings, chapter two, from verse nineteen through twenty-three. Verse nineteen. And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as the Lord see it, but the water is not, and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise. And put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the springs of the waters. And cast the salt in there. And said, Thus says the Lord, Amen. I have healed these waters. Amen. There shall not be from hence any more death. Or barren land. Amen. 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 So the waters we are healed Amen. unto this day, Amen. according to the saying of Elisha, Amen. which he speak. Amen. Greetings from the brethren in Birmingham, and I'm happy to be here. The story we've just read is the story of the life of the people of Jericho. If you could remember, Jericho was a very, very big and strong city. And um, to cast our minds also back, when the children of Israel left Egypt and they were to go to the promised land, the first city they needed to conquer to get into the city was the city of Jericho. Jericho in those days we're told that they have, their walls were so big that in between two walls lies a building. So the men of the city, the men of Jericho, were so proud of their walls. They were so proud of what they had. We remember a lady woman called Rahab, the harlot, who once kept the spies that were sent to go and spy into Jericho. She kept them. But this woman was a harlot living by the gates. And this to tell us the kind of city Jericho was at the time. It was a city where sexual perversion was a trade. Jericho. Who could remember Jericho? That is a city of wickedness. It is known for a city of arm robbery. Even when Jesus Christ in his time told us, that a man was going from Jerusalem, he was going where? To Jericho. And what happened to him? He was accosted by robbers who stripped him of his load and beat him and left him half dead. That is the city of Jericho. Jericho at that time was a city that is full of accostings. Remember, there was a man called Achan. When, the children, when God instructed the children of Israel to go to Jericho and destroy everything, and they must not take anything out of Jericho. But this man, Achan, what did he do? He, he, was, he was attracted unto the, unto the good things of Jericho, and he took them out. And God was not happy with the children of Israel. And Joshua came to God and said, Oh God, what have we done? And God said, Because you are cursed. I remember what happened to Achan and his family, as it were. So that is what we know about Jericho. But the challenge that, has, that is coming before me today, and before all of us, is that 
no matter how terrible a man or a woman, a boy or a girl, no matter how deep in wickedness, in sin that you might have gone through, there is hope. Amen. There is victory. Amen. There is success for those who cry. If you can cry and say, God have mercy on me. There is joy for those who cry. Crying. For personal restoration. Crying for personal restoration. Before now, where we read, the man of God, Elisha, just received the power of God. The mantle fell on him from Elijah, isn't it? And we're told that some men were mocking him. Some men did not even believe. They said, oh, the spirit of Elijah has fallen upon Elisha. But in the midst of that wickedness, verse 19 says, And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant. The situation of this city is pleasant. If you look at our situation, it's pleasant. My situation is pleasant. Your situation is beautiful. There's no need for barrenness. Why should there be barrenness? Why should there be sin? When my situation is pleasant. Why should I be struggling when the situation is pleasant? Why this up and down Christianity when the situation is pleasant? So what the men of the city did, which I pray that God will help us to do. Amen. You know what they did? They first and foremost acknowledge what the problem was. Look at what they said. They said the situation of the city is pleasant. As the Lord see it. But the water is not. The water is bad. The water is not good. When men sees you, they say good situation. When men sees us, we are looking wonderful. I can dress as a pastor. I'm covered with my dressing. This situation is pleasant. But that's not who I am. The situation is good. The men of the city, they acknowledged it. Please, brethren, permit me to ask you. Can we critically look inside? What is the situation? The situation of this. They came to the man of God. They said, man of God. The situation of this city is pleasant. Why this up and down? Why this spiritual dryness? Why this nominalism? When the situation is pleasant. Why do I get saved this Sunday and next Sunday I lose it? When the situation is pleasant. The men of the city acknowledge the situation. There cannot be restoration if there's no acknowledgement of one situation. On the outside, we look nice. On the outside, nobody can tell if something is wrong. On the outside, we are holy. But the men of the city, they acknowledged. 
the recognition of one personal need is the beginning of the possibility of restoration. May God please help us. The men of the city came to Elijah. They said, Sir, I look like a Christian. Brethren, can I ask quickly, what is the situation at home? How is it at home? How is it in your marital life? How is it with your children? The situation is pleasant. People can see us as a family. Is that what it is? May God please help us. Amen. So the first possibility of restoration is for us to be able to acknowledge where the problem lies. The men of the city, that's what they did. Man of God, as a young man, you look nice on the outside. But down deep within you, you are a captive. As a young lady, you look beautiful on the outside. But down deep within you, you are a prisoner of your conscience. The situation of the city is pleasant. If the trumpet should sound, how many people will make it? When the situation is pleasant, that is my fear. How many will make it? Because it looks so good. We have perfected in wearing our marks, and the situation looks pleasant. Even as some of us, we can be in the work of God. Hmm. We can be ministers, preaching as I am doing. We can be Sunday school teachers. We can be workers in the vineyard of God. We officiate others. But nobody can officiate us because we are big men. Because the situation is pleasant. But this man of the city, you know what they did? They cried. Behold! May God please help us cry. Amen. When was the last time you cried? Because the situation is pleasant. These days, when choir members sing, nobody's moved. The situation is pleasant. But the men of the city, they, 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 they acknowledge that. In our lesson this morning, we are told, oh, God bless the teacher. We are told that David, let's quickly look at that. He said it in the book, in 1 Samuel 24, verse 5. And it came to pass, after war, that David's heart was smote him because he had done what? Caught what? Saul's skirt. His heart. That is an acknowledgement of one's position. He came to his senses. What have I done? What? He don't do a thing like that. Before that time, his situation was pleasant. Where we read in the book of Revelations, in verse 3, chapter 3, verse 1. The Bible says that and unto the angels of the church in Sardis write, this sin said he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. It says, I know thy works, 
that you have a name that thou livest and are dead. May God deliver us. Amen. The situation is pleasant. You have a name. I'm a Christian. Sometimes we walk like Christians. We act like it because the situation is pleasant. But that is not who we are. The second thing that these men did that I was so encouraged about is that, dear brethren, there is one thing for us to acknowledge what happens. It's another thing again for us to take this problem to the Lord Jesus. Amen. So, acknowledgement of the problem of the sin, that thing that has bowed me down. You know what, brethren? The reason why you are in church today is because you love God. If not, you will be somewhere else. And I want to bless the Lord God for your sake. Thank God you are here. Because many of our equals are out there. But the Lord God is so pleased to bring you in here. You love the Lord. Boys, is that what it is in your heart? I know you want to do well. But you've not been able to take this matter to the one that can solve the problem. And that's why each Sunday we come, we get saved, and we fall immediately, we leave out here. But look at what the men of the city did in verse 20. <laughs> Glory to God. And he said, bring me a new cruise and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the springs of the waters. Amen. 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 That is what the men did. There is no hypocrite that is happy. Go and find out. They can come out and, and they, are, they, they can wear the marks. But down deep, we are not happy as an hypocrite. But what did they do? He gave them an instruction. Bring me a new cruise. We can spend 20 years in covering up. And for 20 years, my brother, God will not look at you. We can spend 10 years in hiding who we are. For that 10 years, you are still wasting time. We can be scratching the surface without taking the Lord God to where the problem is. That thing, you know, I know that thing. That is the thing that is stopping you from giving your life completely to Christ. And he said, bring me a new cruise. Bring me a new cruise. Amen. Bring me a new cruise. Amen. That is what the Lord God is saying. Amen. Bring me a new cruise. Amen. The man of God Amen. brought him a new cruise. Amen. And the Bible says that, that he went forth to the spring of the waters. Amen. It is only him that can turn around that situation. Do you know every wrong habit has its own beginning? Every sin has where it started from. My brother, let's begin to reflect. What is that thing? Because you came to church, you love God. Why is it still hard for you? Where is that beginning? Every sinfulness had its own beginning. Every difficulty in the life of a man, of a woman, of a boy and a girl has where it started from. And unless we get to the spring of the waters, 
We might just be wasting time. The situation of the city is pleasant, but that's not who we are. That's not who we are. But Lord God is saying that, bring me a new cross. Bring it to me. It will be so wrong for us to live here without taking Jesus to where the problem is. Ah, it will be hard. But you know what? I have an assurance double sure that if you bring that matter, that issue, that the Lord God is putting a finger on, the same brother, that thing, that is it. That is it, sister. That is the issue. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. And you confess it to him. There is victory. You know, every time we are crying for restoration, God is always asking us, take me where it began. Each time we cry for restoration, God is saying, take me where it started from. When you said, God, I need your salvation, God will say, take me there. It might be just one sin you have to confess. It might be just one restitution you have to make. It, it, it might be just one thing. You know it. I know it. The men of the city acknowledge that. They recognize that. You know, we in this congregation, we are a people that have all the opportunity to be great. As a young man, I know you love God. You are a young man and young woman that have the opportunity to be sound. When the Bible says, set a man diligent in all his ways, that he shall stand before kings and not mean men, the Bible knows what he's talking about. God knows what he's talking about. That time you got saved, you made it all. You said, I'm going all out for you, Lord. Amen. But somehow along the line, we drifted away. We have every opportunity to be great. Fathers, our mothers, we've been saved for many years. Is it still the same? The situation is pleasant. As the Lord can see it. But that's not who we are. Now the third thing that this man did is that restoration was not left for them to work out. Did you hear me? Restoration, the personal restoration. And the reason why it is so personal is because when we come together as a church, sometimes we want to pray collective prayer. Brother, today we have to be selfish today. We are going to be very selfish it is a personal business. When the Lord God deals with your heart and put his spirit in you, he will reflect in the church. Amen. Oh yes. Amen. So it is your business. It is my business. So the restoration of their personal life is not left for them to work out. God will not give you what you can't do. No, 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 no. He is not a tax master. The things you can do, that you can do. And God will do the rest. Amen. Wonderful. Look at that. Amen. Bring me a new cruise. You can do it. Take me to the spring of the waters. That you can do. But the healing of the waters is left for God to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
The healing of the waters is for God. Brother, you can confess. Sister, you can confess. You can tell the Lord where it all started from. That you can do. You can cry to the Lord and say, God, have mercy on me. That you can do. That I can do. He alone can heal. He alone can forgive. He alone can change barren grounds and make them fruitful again. He is willing to do what we cannot do. Look at verse 21. And he went forth unto the springs of the waters and cast out therein and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed these waters. Amen. I have healed these waters. Amen. There shall not be from hence Amen. any more what? death or barren land. He alone can change your situation. So what is the situation? He alone can transform it. That you can do. The Lord has the power to change that barren land. It might be in your job. It might be in your family. It might be in your relationship. It might be even the work of God. Think of it. The situation of this city is pleasant. But that's not who we are. The Bible says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive. And not only that, to cleanse. Hallelujah. To cleanse. You know when the Bible says cleanse, it's total restoration from all that has pinned us down. And in verse 22, so the waters were healed Amen. unto this day. Amen. Do you know what the Lord does is perfect and it's final? Yes. Yes. According to the saying of Elijah which he speak. Amen. Brethren, I've not come to shout on you. I've not come to talk harshly on you. Do you know what I've come to do? I've come so that we can all both pray together. Yes, yes, yes. The men of the city acknowledge what the situation is. And they took him to the spring of the waters. And he cast the salt therein. Until this day, the men are still standing. When the Lord saves you and puts salt therein, you won't fall again. Because you have already acknowledged the problem and you took him to there. I want to ask, are you ready to take the Lord Jesus Christ there? Are you ready? Why don't you come to the altar of praise? Or to sing CGS 249.
Dear Lord, we come before thee on our knees, O Lord, and we just ask that you take us as we are. Lord, we have no other plea than to just ask for your mercy. Lord, we are praying that today you will heal every soul, everyone that is backsliding, you will restore. We are praying that everyone that is pretending you will make real, we are asking, oh God, that you will heal all lukewarmness. Amen. We are praying, dear Lord God, that there will be full restoration today Amen. as we cry unto thee individually for our personal and individual and home and restoration. We are asking, oh God, that you will please come down. Amen. You will hear and answer our prayers. Amen. Pour down your mercy upon us, oh God. We are praying that you will save today. And we ask that you will sanctify, oh Lord, and baptize with the Holy Ghost. Heal, O Lord, and deliver. Thank you for answered prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.